Early in the morning, in the morning. What's going on, people? It's your boy Cam Topical Juice, and we're back with another Love Island review. Apologies for not getting them out yesterday and the day before, but I thought, you know what? Um, I'm alive now, still a little bit tired. Those shifts have taken it out of me, but I'm back. Let's just do a little quick roundup of both the episodes. They were boring as hell anyway. We didn't really get to miss much, but there was a, little, a few little talking points like Scott's hated for some reason, Zach calling out Mitch, Montel's dead, a balcony speech. So let's just talk about the main bits. And then, um, yeah, we'll skip through it. And I've got to do a video on the BBC presenter today. So I've got three videos dropping today, if all goes well, to make up for lost time. Anyway, guys, like the video for me. Hit the bell to be notified for me. I'm freshly trimmed. I'm back to being Leng. You know the vibes. Rosa 50k, subscribe, all of that, all of that. Anyway, so, not yesterday's episode, but the, the, the episode before, let's just discuss some of the talking points. The boys are basically sitting around the day beds and they're talking about Mitch, they're talking about Mitch's snakery. And you've literally got someone, you, you, you've literally got Ty here. Yeah. Ty's not holding back talking about my man's bottom barrel. I was thinking, rah, that's quite, that's quite harsh, that's quite harsh. But the thing is, I know what he means when he says that, I, like that type of behavior, where you can pretend to be a, that you're, like a boy who pretends to be a boy to your face and literally bad mouth you to, to, to secure girls, I also concur. I believe that is bottom barrel behavior. It really is that like you are a low serpent of a man to do that. And I've been calling Mitch a snake from the, from the very beginning, he's a snake. Um, so like, yeah, you know, I, I'm not changing my stance on that. But yeah, it is what it is. The boys just discussed that essentially and they're saying, yeah, no man like him is brazy. Bro, it's actually so mad. Like, what, what did Ty say? Ty was like, yo, Mitch is a brazy you. Do you know how mad it is? To hear someone say, Brazy you, on Love Island. Oh my days. <laughs> it's Brazy still, I can't lie, it's Brazy. Then Zach calls out uh, Mitch, and I can't lie, that might have been Zach's finest moment in the whole of Love Island. Man said, how, he goes, <laughs> he goes, so, how are you feeling over there, snake boy? <laughs> Yo, Zach, yo, yo, that's, that's, yeah, you're, you're funny for that one, I can't lie. And then Mitch starts getting a little bit defensive, yeah, talking about, uh, he's like, oh, surely only you and Sammy can be mad, like, surely, sh surely only you and Sammy can be mad. All this stuff, yeah. And the, the, the man that basically is onto him, and Tyreek's saying, listen, it just makes us question your character. And again, I mean, it's quite ironic, because everyone's questioning your character, Ty. Even though I know your character, I know who you are. I give you, I give you your dues when they're, when they're deserved, and I give you criticism when it's deserved. But most people, especially women, they question your character. You know, what, what are you what are you on, Tyree? You know what I'm saying? You're talking about L, Ella here, but then you're doing all this and you're playing games, allegedly, all this stuff. So it's just quite funny that Tyree's the one like, to, to say that your his question, his character's being questioned. But um, he ain't wrong though. Like you have to, you have to question their man there's character because their man are snakes. I can't lie. You then got KD and Uzi just doing their thing. Forget all that. Um, Jess and Sammy. Now, guys, Jess is my donor of the last two episodes. Guys, Jess has no self-respect. She does not rate herself, she's got no shame. If Sammy wanted chewing gum, I wouldn't even give him the chewing gum that's stuck on the bottom of my shoes, bro. Like, he, he is a waste man and a waste of space. Like, seriously, I, I cannot believe you. Yeah, Jess doesn't have the self-respect or decency to let it go. She's happy to be a whipping uh, girl. She's happy to be a pinata, yeah? Nay, just getting beaten on by Sammy and his, and his metaf metaphoric stick. Like she, she got no self-respect, she got no shame. She, as if he, he is mugging you off constantly. She's cried constantly. She's been in a, a triangle constantly and she still wants to take him back and cuddle up to him and laugh and giggle like it's all well and good. Nah, whatever happens to you and how, how bad your heart shatters, Jess, you deserve it to be honest because I was saying the same thing about Shaq last year or this year, whenever that was. Shaq had no shame. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. You know what I'm saying? Let, Whatever, you don't want to be saved, clearly. Also, I forgot to mention, yeah, I made a note of this. The girls, I think in the morning, yeah, while the boys were chatting about Mitch's snakery, the girls were, um, were talking about Leah and Montel. And basically, they, they were all in agreement that they don't like being compared. Yeah, that's, that, that was what hurt Leah's feelings the most, you know, that she got compared to um, Tink, or whatever her name is, and things like that. But didn't Scott get compared to Elon? Or Ellen, whatever his name is. Didn't Scott get compared to Ellen? Didn't Ella and all the girls say, oh, he's better suited to you. Yeah, Scott's this, but Ellen's this. So the girl, girls in Love Island really struggle to, to notice their own hypocrisies and contradictions. It's, it's genuinely hilarious, but don't worry, I'm here. TJ is here to highlight the contradictions. I, I'm, it's all good, I, it's fine, you feel me? I can, I, can take, I can play that role. 
Ty said he's in love. I laughed. Shut the hell up. I'm just going to move on from that. BS. Mitch, Mitch was talking about how he's not used to breaking the lab code. Apart from the last five weeks. With three people. Three or four different people you've broken the, lab, the, the bro code with. So let's not lie here. But in the end, he eventually apologises. He comes with his hat, his hat in his hands. Like Oliver Twist. Please sir, can I have some more? You know, can I have some friends? Please, please guys, I'm a loser. Can I have some more? Can I have some more friends? Yeah, that's Mitch. Yeah, coming in with his tail between, with his dick between his legs on some sorry tick. But you know what, Mitch, I'll give you credit. You took accountability. Let's move on. Yeah, even though you're a snake and I don't, I literally don't trust you as far as I can throw your ass. But um, yeah, at least he apologized and yeah, he came to his dick between his legs and whatnot. Then you've got Montel. I, I would love to give Montel the donut of the day, but Jess deserves it the most. Montel and his weak ass balcony speech. Guys, I, it was embarrassing. Like, not only was it unoriginal, it was poorly executed. All he did was go to the balcony and read some meaty ass apology letter off. Oh, oh since, I, since you embarrassed yourself, I'm gonna embarrass me. Uh, you know, I like you and, bro, Montel, you're, you're, you're just, you're a crusty the clown, you're a goofy man. You're a full on goofy, like, it's, it's madness. The, honestly, it was, a, it was a terrible, terrible idea. It was terribly executed. And you've got KD here. Yeah? You've literally got KD. Excuse me. You've got KD crying, saying to people that, that the standard's been set. Montel really means it. He's really set the standard. What are you talking about? What, the standard? What, for, for clown auditions, bro? What are you talking about? He set the standard. That being said, The Simpsons has been going on for like 30 years. We need a new cast. He can, he's auditioning for Krusty. So he, he, he set the standard for clown auditions to be in The Simpsons. That's, that's the only standard he set. He's the new Krusty the Clown because there was nothing standard setting about that. It was a joke. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I might be, you might be saying I'm harsh in that, but it was pathetic. Sorry, my bad, innit? Sorry, not sorry. Then you've got Scott and Abby talking. I don't really think this is going to work that much. I think he had a chance potentially, but then Abby even shaded my man in the game yesterday talking about, ah, oh, I'm giving you the shade because... I feel like now you're single, that's the only time you're moving to me. I was thinking, wow, Scott, you are going out sad. You are going out sizzad. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Zach and Molly get closed off, who cares? Scott pulled Abby, whatever, that's dead. Anyway, the new episode comes. This is yesterday. Katie and Uzi speak, and she basically says that she likes him, and if she could construct a man, it would be him. Obviously, she hasn't met me yet. So you're forgiven. Anyway, Mitch and Abby speak and he's just begging her lots because he's shook of Scott, even though he's got no real reason to be because she ain't really feeling Scott like that, I don't think. Uh, Scott actually then pulls her for a chat and Mitch sarcastically says, oh, brilliant, brilliant. He's Mitch is clearly shook, by the way. He's, he, he talks about how there's no competition, how I ain't worried, I ain't worried, bro. What he means when he says he's not worried, that translates to, I am categorically worried. Simple as that. Then you got... Yeah, Abby and Scott talking. He's just talking about how she, they, they would have nice babies. Dead chat, whatever. The man and them are winding Mitch up there. Then the recoupling comes. And I, again, I could just skip through all this because honestly, guys, the episode was trash. Both of these episodes were trash. You had Zach and Molly. Zach talking all that lovey-dovey stuff saying that your mum and dad should be proud. Crazy. Ellen and Catherine. Whatever. Whitney and Lockham. Whatever. Uzi and Katie. Whatever. Sammy and Jess. Whatever. Genuinely, she has no self-respect. He's talking about how he came here as a boy and now he's and now he's the man she deserves. No, no, you are the canine she deserves. You are the golden retriever she deserves, you understand? Mitch and Abby, he basically recycled the same bars as he did five weeks ago. Oh yeah, she's this, she's that, and she's got a lovely body. Yeah, we've heard that before. Who did you say that about? Molly, I think. Yeah, you said that about Molly. You're embarrassing, you're an embarrassment, honestly. Anyway, Monto and Leah, joke. And then Scott and Amber. So. Amber, again, what is she doing here? Again, I, I actually like Scott as well, but what's he doing here? Why is there not a dumping? How and why has there not been a dumping? Scott and Amber, yeah, obviously he, they're just friends. They've got nothing to, you know, he wanted Abby, for example, but the order of things, you know, they really should have let Scott do the order of things, but they've, you know, the producers, they're lining up the couples now. This is what's happening there. They're getting rid of the stragglers and they're, and they're cementing the couples. Um, but everyone was on Scott's net this episode. Everyone dislikes Scott. And sorry guys, I refuse to buy into that theory that, oh, we just haven't seen something. We must have just missed something. No, 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 no. The boy has always had a problem with Scott because he isolated himself. Remember, they always, they always questioned his character because they questioned whether he likes Catherine because he spent too much time with her, basically. 
That, that was the whole beef. That Scott alienated himself from the boys group because he was constantly with Catherine. That's how their beef started. Or well, not beef, but that's how their friction started. That he wasn't that included. Or he wasn't, it wasn't that inclusive or whatever. So I'm not really buying into that. But then, obviously, and, and the girls, they're just going to support Catherine. They back Catherine. It's like, a, it's, like a, a whole, it's like a whole gang of people just jumping on the Catherine bandwagon. So that's my theory. So forget all that BS about we've, we would have seen an inkling of something. Yeah, the producers are God and they can hire as much as they want, but we would have caught a glimpse of something that would explain why they dislike Scott, but they, they don't. What I've just told you is what's happening. That's the explanation of why they dislike Scott personally. But anyway, the challenge comes and they have to give shade to, to people. They have to shade someone and give their reasons. Catherine... Uh, cussed out Mitch for being messy. I actually rate Catherine for that because she, she easily could have cussed out like Scott or whatever, but she chose um, Mitch because he's just a messy, messy guy, man. He really is messy. Sammy shades Mitch as well. Um, I, I haven't actually write, wrote the reasons down here. I just wrote so and so. Tariq shaded Katie and he actually called her second best. This guy is so straight up. It, it I, it just makes me it makes me proud the only ones that he he really tells it straight and just doesn't give a flying f about what you have to say about it and you can tell katie that burnt her because like she tried to get her get back later in the episode but anyway he basically he basically shades uzi and and, and ella because he said ah oh. I, I i don't really i don't agree with what tyreek said about uzi though i don't agree with that at all talking about oh yeah if it ain't ella it's home and um yeah, Katie said that she doesn't want to be second best, but it looks like that's what she is. You understand? So I rate the Katie comment, but I don't think the Uzi comment. I mean, Uzi did say that to be fair. So I mean, we could blame him, but ultimately, I think that's not how Love Island works. You're not just gonna move. You're not just gonna go home if Ella. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real here, Tyler. Like, he's obviously gonna move on to the next best thing. Like, that's just that's just life. That's exactly what you were doing with Katie. In fact, like you 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 were just using Katie as a pawn. But you, if it was done with you and Ella, you could have easily gone. But to be fair, you didn't say Ella or God. You didn't actually say Ella or Holmes. But either way, th let's not do that. But anyway, they shade, they shade them. And Uzi tried to get the get back by shading, I think, Ty. Anyway, uh, Zach shades Scott and Amber. Abby and Mitch shade Scott and Amber. Montel shades Scott and Amber. And yeah, obviously that makes sense because Leah doesn't like Scott at all. They dislike each other, whatever. I can't remember the reasons. But I can't, some of the reasons were so stupid. Like, oh, you could have you could have given Amber a better speech. What are you talking about? They, he doesn't like Amber. He doesn't want to be with Amber. It's a friendship couple. Obviously, he's not going to say uh, give, give her a better speech. What's, what's wrong with these people? Generally, what is wrong with these people is to get off their high horse and be humbled, a lot of them. A lot of these people need to be humbled. We need, to, we need to drape some out of the villa so we can give them an ass whooping of hum humility. The only one's there. Anyway, Amber shades Jess and Sammy. And Katie tried to, to cuss Ty, Rick and Ella by saying, oh, you know, when they, when they start throwing the stuff at them, they, they um, tried to, yeah, they, they were like, oh, you should put that much effort into your relationship. That was, well, I don't really think that was needed. That was clearly just you, it was just you highlighting how hurt you were at what Tyreek said. So, yeah, man. Ella and Katie, like, afterwards, Ella starts beefing Katie, talking about she's obviously not my friend because she's shady. I thought she was my friend, etc., etc., but she ain't. She's a... She's a snake. In the wise words of K-Trap, how much time can I cut this grass? You know what I'm saying? All these slivering snakes. How much time can I cut this grass? Get them gone, man. Um, anyway, guys, these two episodes were media. I just wanted to get this video out for you anyway. Like, comment, subscribe, let me know your thoughts, and I will um, try and get this BBC presenter out video out as well. Peace.